day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a shout of praise to our Creator and our King. We welcome you to our Sunday morning service on this first Sunday in July. What a joy it is to greet you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. For God, you so love the world that you promised to give us everlasting life. And we thank you, our Creator, for giving us a promise and giving us a word that we can hold on to. 
thank you, Lord God, that on this Sabbath day when life seems to be so fragile and comes so quickly for some, we pray that you would give comfort and peace to those who are going through tough moments of life. God, we thank you that on this Sabbath day that as we gathered for worship, that you are already there to meet us. And so we pray that the words that are spoken, the thoughts that are given, the prayers that are lifted, most importantly, the actions that are taken, will be pleasing and acceptable to you. Thank you, God, for the person who's watching for the first time, who may feel distance from the Lord. We thank you, God, for the person who is new to the faith and is trying to build that foundation so they don't go back. God, we thank you for the man or the woman who is returning back, knowing that with you they can't make it. But without you, they can't make it. But with you, they can. We praise you, God, for the opportunity to pray and to preach. We ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory, great things God has done, is doing, and promises to do along the way. We invite you to join us today as we go to God's word from the King James Version of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6, a familiar psalm to those who've been in Sunday school, a familiar psalm for those who maybe had memory lessons from back in the day. For Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6, is a psalm of praise written by the hymn writer to the church in worship. The Word of God says, Blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his or her delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, thus they meditate day and night. And he or she shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth their fruit in their season. Their leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever they doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this morning, I invite you to listen to verses 1, 2, and 3 of this text once again. For the Bible says, Blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, her delight, is in the law of the Lord, and in God's law doth they meditate day and night. And they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth their fruit in their season. Their leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever they doeth shall prosper. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement right in your home, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment today, this first Sunday in July, preach on our subject, Living a Righteous Life. Living a righteous life. Type right there in the chat room, say, that's my goal today. That's, that's my goal, to live a righteous life. My friends, living a righteous life does not have to be hard, and living a righteous life does not have to be difficult. Living a righteous life, church, does not have to be laborious, and living a righteous life does not have to be a do or die proposition. However, it does require effort, and it does require work. It does direct you to consistency, and it does expect intentionality. Living a righteous life, y'all, does, does necessitate focus and it does look for 
steadiness. It does work best with a clarity of purpose, and it does demand an avoidance of distraction. But living a righteous life, living a life of peace and joy, tranquility and love, hope, prosperity, excitement and delight. This kind of life, y'all, is achievable and this kind of life can be rewarding if you will follow God's direction on the journey of your life. Living. Let me say that again. This kind of life, y'all, is achievable, and this kind of life can be rewarding if you will follow God's direction on your journey. Living a righteous life, my friends, is something I believe that all of us should have and something I believe that all of us should work toward as we seek to truly serve Almighty God. And let me just explain what I mean when I talk about a righteous life. For the term righteous is commonly referred to as something that you believe is morally right or fair. The, the righteous life is, is not error free, but it is excellent in service. The righteous life, it is not without mistake, but it is covered with mercy. The righteous life is not perfection, but it is prayer based, peace inspired, practiced daily, and praiseworthy. The righteous life calls for us to live according to God's law, and then God's law always supersedes man's law. God's law is always higher than what's written on the books because you should love your neighbor not just because the world said so, but love your neighbor because the Bible said so. You should treat people with respect not because you don't want to go to jail, but you ought to treat people with respect because the Bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself. You should tell the truth not because you don't want to go to prison, but you should tell the truth because the Bible Bible says thou shalt not lie. You should not take your neighbor's car, your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's whatever, your lawnmower, weed eater, whatever it is because not that the law says so, but you ought to do it because the Bible says thou shalt not steal. You see the word of God always supersedes the, the, the presence of mankind. You see that's what we have to take a caution and a pause for this 4th of July weekend because some call it Independence Day, but the world has reminded us with 25 million people standing up in the streets saying something about Black Lives Matter. The world has reminded us from Singapore to, to Peru, to, from Brazil to Portland. The world has reminded us from Australia to Argentina, from all parts of Germany and Europe, and even in these yet to be United States of America. The world has reminded us that independence for some has not been delivered for all. Freedom from some has not been delivered to everybody. When the Declaration of Independence was written, you understand, y'all, that it was 90 years later before people of color, 90 years later before women, 90 years later before those who are marginalized ever got to experience some freedom. And it was only until, eight, until 1965 that you had a civil rights bill that allowed people who look like me to be able to walk into an establishment and sit down and have a bite to eat, to walk in the front door and not go in the back door, to go to any school of choice. You see, this Independence Day still has a lot of work to be done. What is righteousness, my friends? Righteousness, according to the Bible, teaches us it's based on what God says about what makes us right in God's eyes. Psalm 7 says it this way, y'all. It says that God is a righteous judge. The word righteous in Hebrew means just, lawful, and correct. In the New Testament, the word righteous comes from a Greek word, and it calls for us to conform to the standards, to feed on the will, and to trust in the character of Almighty God. That's why I like Jesus' first sermon coming at the Sermon on the Mount when he said so eloquently, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
Come on, you have to help me preach right there. You might as well say, go a little deeper, preacher, because when you understand what righteousness is, it will indeed feed your heart and feed your soul. When you understand what righteous living is, it brings glory to Almighty God. And the question is, what are the rewards of living a righteous life? Here it is simply, he or she who follows righteousness and mercy finds life and honor. When you follow righteousness, you will have a life of honor. For we've already listed them before, but because repetition is the mother and the father and the sister and the brother of learning, I've got to give it to you one more time. So let me drop it like it's hot. For righteousness, my friends, is living in peace and joy, tranquility and love, hope and prosperity, excitement and delight. It's bouncing back when you fail. It's getting up when you fall down. It's arriving early and staying late. It's holding on when others want to let go. It's believing that he'll make a way out of no way, that he will break the yoke and destroy the curse. He's conforming you not to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's confirming that God is a shelter in a storm, and he's, by his stripes you are healed. You have to want a righteous life, my friends. You have to understand being righteous means being in the presence of Almighty God. But now, before you get to shout on too quickly, I need you to pause for the cause and remember that righteous living, my friends, is embedded in discipline. Righteous living comes from having a disciplined life, and it is straight from the word of Almighty God. For the Bible says God disciplines those that God loves, and those that God loves, God calls his own. So don't miss that, church, for God disciplines those that God loves, and those that God love, God calls God's own. So if you are being disciplined by God, consider yourself being one that God calls God's own. If you have been disciplined by God, consider yourself to be one that God loves. If God is telling you to check yourself before you wreck yourself, then you are, should be grateful and not hateful for the discipline that is coming your way. If God has you in a holding pattern in order to reach you before God can teach you, consider yourself blessed because you are one that God loves. And this morning, Morning, my friends, I want you to recognize as we open up this text and to see motivation and inspiration, I want to invite you on this journey to righteous living by turning to Psalms number one, the first Psalm of the Hebrew of manuscript that gives us this song of praise. For the Bible says, blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his or her delight is in the law of the Lord. And he or she will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth their fruit in their season. Their leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever they doeth, it shall prosper. Blessed, blessed is the man or the woman. You see, when you live a righteous life, you're living under the blessings of Almighty God. And the three points or the three keys I want you to get from this text, y'all, I'd like to share with you on living a righteous life. And here they are, three keys of living righteously. It's your walk, it's your stand, and it's your sitting. You ought to type right there. That's all I need in the chat box. Your walk is your stand and it's where you sit. And to have a fully, complete, righteous life, you need to watch where you walk and watch where you stand and watch where you sit. Somebody type, that's my word right there, because I've been walking in ways that were not pleasing to God. I've been standing with folk who didn't love God, and I've been sitting in some places that God ain't nowhere to be found. So if you want to live righteously, come on, help me preach right there. If you want to live holy, you have to watch where you walk and watch where you stand and watch where you sit. The Bible teaches us here that when a person desires to live righteously, 
he or she does not walk in the advice of the wicked. The biblical metaphor of walking refers to how one lives. You see, the fastest way to miss your blessing is to take counsel and advice from those who don't regard God's view of life. The fastest way to miss your blessing is to walk with somebody who's not walking with the Lord. And I don't want you to miss that today, my friends, because God is dropping a word into your spirit, and God is asking you to change your neighborhood and change your neighbors, because you see, if you stay, if you stay in the same playground, stand with the same, playing with the same people, you will play with the same kind of behavior. What do we say in recovery? Change your neighbor and your neighborhood. Change your playground and your playmates. You have to change so you can walk righteously before Almighty God. You see, one of the other ways is that we have to walk righteously with God to receive God's blessings. We have to use the words of that comedian and that TV actor and that radio personality, Steve Harvey. Steve says it this way. He says, you can't tell big dreams to small-minded people. Quit hanging around folk trying to let them lift you up when all they're doing are pulling you down. Stop using your smartphone on dumb people. Do something with your mind, your body, and your spirit and walk in the ways of Almighty God. Secondly, my friends, to live a righteous life, the Bible says he or she does not stand in the pathway with sinners. Let me say that again. If you learn to live righteous, you can't stand with folk who are sinning. Let me pause and be quiet right there for a minute because somebody now has to go through your Rolodex. I'm sorry, old school. Somebody now has to go through your black book. I'm sorry, old school. Somebody right now needs to go to your phone and push delete on some folk who you know ain't up to no good. And quit trying to tell yourself you are in their presence. You're going to lift them up. Let me tell you, sugar baby, if you are not going higher with them and they are with you, they are bringing you lower. You've got to realize that God does put us in the company of individuals to minister to. God does put us in the place to be a light for those living in darkness. God does put us around individuals who need to see Christ alive in us. But quit sleeping, I mean, excuse me, quit hanging out, I mean, quit, quit going out with folk who are doing nothing but pulling you down. The Bible, the Bible says standing, standing is a metaphor for being hooked up with. Can we, keep it, can we keep it real right there? The Bible is saying don't get hooked up with folk who are the wrong crowd. Watch the company you keep and keep company worthwhile watching. Find a purpose. Find a cause. Find some friends who are about something and add value to somebody else's life. I got to give a shout out to all the Simon Sinek and the Golden Circle because he says that we have to clarify the why, your purpose, your cause of your belief. You have to discipline your how, your strengths, your values, your guiding principles, and you have to have consistency of what. What are you doing? What's your product? What's your book? What's your service? What are you doing? Simply put this way, y'all. Simon Sinek says, don't worry about what to do and get bogged down on how to do it if you don't first understand why you do it, what you do in the first place. Somebody just type right there, that's my word today. You have to stop worrying about what you're doing, what we're going to do next, what's going to happen when the church opens, what's going to happen when I go back to work, what's going to happen at the end. Don't worry about the what, how we're going to do it. I don't know how we're going to make it. How can we come out of this pandemic? Don't worry about the how, go to the, worry about the, the how, go to the why. Why do you live? Why do you get up? Why do you sing? Come on, Kirk Franklin help me understand this. Kirk says it like this. Someone raised the question, why do we sing? When we lift our hands to Jesus, what do we really mean? Someone may be wondering when we sing our song. At times we may be crying and nothing even wrong. You see, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing because his, his eye is, uh, God is watching. Oh, oh okay, I got a little excited there. Help me out. If my musicians were here, help me with that. Because you see, you realize that I sing because I'm 
happy. What is the happiness? I'm blessed. I sing because I'm joyful. What gives me joy? I got joy on the inside. I sing because I got life and the life inside of me gives me strength to keep on keeping on. The good news, the good news of the text, y'all, is that we have to recognize that the instruction from Psalms says don't stand in the pathway of sinners. Don't hang out with folk who are up to no good. Don't go to lunch with them. Don't text them. Don't tweet them. Don't FaceTime them. Don't drive by to see if their car's in the driveway. Don't hook up with folk who ain't about nothing. You've got to get around good people. If you want to live a righteous life, you need to hook up with folk who are about some. Okay, let me quote my 100-year-old mama who says it this way. She says, son, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. To live a righteous life, thirdly and finally, it, is that you, he or she does not sit in the company of Mark. Markers, 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 y'all. They, they make light of the serious things, sitting in the judgment of everybody and everything. Yet they fail to see their own critical gaze that turned back on themselves. Markers, y'all, they more concerned about the speck in other folks' eyes and can't see the big two by four in their own eyes. You see, three ways of living righteous is you got to watch where you walk, watch where you stand, watch where you sit. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. You, you might just type walk. That's what you're asking God to improve your life with. You might just type stand. That's where you need God to help you to stand in the, in the, in the, in the community of the righteous. And you might just type sit. That means you have to get up and move and start sitting in a place that brings blessing. Notice the progression, walking, standing, and sitting. The one is a regular influence of the people. That's how they walk, how they stand, and how they sit. What does a blessed person do? They delight in the Lord. I like that, y'all, because to delight in the Lord means you find joy and pleasure in the power and the presence of Almighty God. To be blessed by God, I must depend upon God's wisdom in God's will. To be blessed by God, a man or woman finds this in God's word, meditating on it day and night. Now, somebody might raise the question, Reverend, I got a job and I can't be reading the Bible day and night. Reverend, I'm taking care of children. I can't be reading day and night. Reverend, I got other things to do. You preacher, you can read all the time. I can't read it day and night. But look what the word says. The word does not say that you are to read the word day and night. But the psalmist says, my friends, that you are to meditate on it day and and night. You ought to type, that's my shout right there. Because when you meditate on something, it becomes a part of you. When you meditate on something, it gets into your skin, into your pores, and you know all about them. Confession is good for the soul, bad for the reputation. Since COVID-19, I've been eating onions and garlic every day. Every day. So I wasn't worried about six foot distance from people staying away from me. I, that, that's just who it is, right? But let me tell you what happens by eating onions and garlic. Not only does it get into my mouth, it gets into my skin, gets into my pores, gets into my clothes. And I want you to know that when they see me coming, they, they can smell me before I get there. Can I help somebody out this Sunday morning? You need to meditate on the word of God so hard that when they see you coming, they're going to stop cussing. Meditate on the word of God so hard when they see you coming, they're going to stop lying. Meditate on the word of God so hard that when they see you coming, they're going to sit up and straighten up and tell the truth. You need to meditate on the word of all. Meditating on the word of God means you got to chew on it. It means you got to digest it. You got to drink it. You got to ingest it. You got to make sure it's a part of your everyday life. Don't just read the word, but meditate on the word. When you meditate on the word of God, the word becomes alive to you. Can I explain it to you this way? When you meditate 
meditate on the word of God, you say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not want. That's my supply. He making me lie down in green pasture. That's my rest. He leading me beside still waters. That's my refreshments. Meditating on the word of almighty God. He restores my soul. That's my healing. He leading me in the path of righteousness. That's my guidance for his name's sake. That's my purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's my testing. I'm meditating. I will fear no evil. That's my protection. For thou art with me. That's my faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's my discipline. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You worried about your haters. You ought to give God thanks that God's putting a banquet table in front of your haters. And if your haters stop hating, they may be invited to participate. Don't hate on the haters. That's what haters do. Understand that God is preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's your hope. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's my connect, God, my consecration. My cup overfloweth. That's my abundance. Here it is. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's my blessing. That's my hope. That's my love. That's my joy. That's my eternity forever and ever and ever. You've got to give God praise right there because when you meditate on the word of God, it becomes alive in your soul. We've got to meditate, meditate, y'all. We, we ask the question, how does the word speak to us? It, 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 it speaks to us in a way, y'all, that gives us a sense of hope. Meditation, here it is. It's the gap between hearing the word and being blessed, closed with meditation. The gap between hearing the word and closing that gap, it happens with meditation. See, the blessed person is like a tree planted by flowing streams. Such trees, y'all, they're not easily swayed. They hold on. And here's the final thing I want you to take from this sermon. Live a righteous life. Three things going to happen in your life. You're going to be planted, you're going to be placed, and you will prosper. When you live a righteous life, you've got to recognize God's going to plant you. God's going to place you, and God says you will prosper. The flowing streams in the Bible, it talks about an irrigation system that simply says that in the midst of a drought, in the midst of trouble, in the midst when everybody else is in lack because God places you in the right place, you will prosper. In the midst of the world falling apart, you will be anchored in the Lord, and the Lord will give you direction because you are placed in the right, but you're also planted, and planted means that it's going to take a whole lot to pull you up. It's going to take a whole lot to destroy you. It does not mean that you won't have trials and errors. It does not mean that the storms of life won't come on you because you are just planted in the word. But when you are planted, here it is, with the rivers of water streaming, flowing to give you nourishment, the Bible talks about that you will be prosperous. You will bear much fruit. You will be an example to all. And don't forget this, y'all, is that a tree that bears fruit tells you what kind of tree it is. And we have to raise that question, take a checkup from the neck up and ask ourselves, are we bearing good fruit? Are we living the kind of life that we can give to somebody else? Are we bear? You will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. But here's one more footnote. Understand that a tree never eats its own fruit. You are bearing fruit for somebody else. You are bearing a witness for somebody else. You are living a life for somebody else. You, you have to recognize the fruit is never good until it's broken from the tree and given to somebody else. Today, we're going to have communion, but we're going to symbolize Jesus breaking bread. But I cannot help to go back and be reminded of that great miracle when Jesus blessed and he broke bread. Recognize that the blessing happened before the breaking, but the miracle didn't 
didn't happen until it was broken. Back it up, say it again. The blessing happened before the breaking, but it was only in the breaking that the 5,000 was fed. God has you in a place right now this first Sunday in July wanting to bless you with a righteous life. God has you in a place right now as you go through COVID-19, as you go through this pandemic. God is wanting to bless you, but God has to break you so God can give you out to somebody else. Do not get discouraged. Do not get despondent. God is calling you to a life of prosperity. What is prosperity? It means being blessed by God, blessed by God, going out and coming in, blessed by God in the highs and in the lows, blessed by God on top of the mountain and also at the valley, but never did get discouraged because the valley is always at the bottom of the mountain. You may be in a valley right now, but God is calling you to go higher with his word and higher in his spirit and higher with his love as you climb that mountain. What is prosperity? Prosperity. Prosperity, y'all, is to carry to or forward, to bear witness to. And so many words from the Hebrew, God says, I'm going to make you prosperous as you take a step forward forward. God says, I'm going to give you blessings as you move in my direction. God says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out more than you can ever imagine as you move forward. You see, you got to recognize that prosperity is not about stuff because the Bible tells us greed causes fighting. Trusting in the Lord leads to prosperity. Greed causes you to pull down folk, but prosperity moving forward, okay, you're not getting it. Let me give them to them this way, Minister Donna, prosperity, when it's interpreted in the Greek, also means peace. Peace. The peace that passes understanding. The peace that carries us to when peace like a river attendeth my way. And when peace comes to us, it, 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 it helps me understand that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right with my soul. It's, it's going to be all right with who I am. It's going to be all right with, with, the, with, with my condition. Yes, I want to be prosperous, but, but I think pastor's telling you something today that, that you want to now ask God for a sense of prosperity. Prosperity to be blessed, to give to somebody else. See, I got to speak that word to somebody. A spirit is telling me to really focus about some peace. Somebody's going through some stuff right now. And it's only the peace of Christ that gives you hope, that gives you an anchor. It's only the peace of Christ that can come and show you what true blessings is all about. We're going to go out blessing on blessing today. And I've asked the band to really pump us up. If you haven't seen this video, I'm not asking you to subscribe to YouTube. But if we were here at the church, it will be nothing but a bop on bop day. Do know that I love you. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven shine upon you. I love you in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Minister Aaron, for being here. And thank all of you for being a great part of our service today. Be sure, be sure to join us online. Subscribe, text to us, give us a call. We'd love to be the place that you call home. I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.